unplugged. We're going to turn insights into action, and it's your turn to uh, go around. And this is a combination of what I did on my family vacation and the book report back at the ranch to say this is what I did for my two to three days in New York City, and uh, how we, what we accomplished, what you learned, what you heard, what your challenges are to us. Um, I kind of like a, a repetitiveness and kind of things that, uh, that can set themselves in the way we think. So these are the questions from yesterday at the lunch tabletop. And thank you all so much for indulging us in uh, kind of going out there and going bigger. We, most of us stayed, so we didn't go home after that experience, but kind of having a conversation. Um, so we're still inviting you to say, what, what causes you to think about your job differently? Uh, what might you be taking back to the office? Because now we are headed back to the office, similar to the question that was just asked. And then really important to us, and we have our inspiration board. It's going to be up at the ARF on 432 Park Avenue South. And you're all invited to come join us. And, uh, and hopefully we can inspire each other there. Uh, but really, what questions do you need us to help answer? And to kick off this discussion, I'm, I'm going to uh, uh, share a film that's from Kiosk. And this also has a bit of a message, because uh, on my listening tour, I heard that sometimes, and it was referenced here too, you know, you can have a lot of talk and maybe just don't get around to action. And maybe at the ARF, we've been slow from time to time. And so uh, we've taken film from yesterday and uh, the day before that, and it's been put together in a quick inspirational video. And then, uh, then I'll introduce the, the uh, research unplugged. My group was a mobile group and we talked about um, the need for cross-platform research because everybody wants to understand the incremental effect of mobile on top of the existing media, um, as well as understanding how different media work together to affect consumers. They, um, they found that uh, audience measurement uh, conference that, that the ARF puts on uh, is much more focused than the Rethink conferences and that from an advertising perspective uh, it hits their sweet spot and they like the focus and the concentration of the different topics that are presented the other day. So I really talk about in the book and what I believe is true for the future is that jobs are about fit and our business, which used to be seen as a soft business, is much more of a hard business. And the idea is that you, you can't run away from math. You've got to think about telling a story with grounded, that's grounded in data. And the more you do that and the more you hone those skills, the better off you are. And I don't care if it comes from political science background or from a behavioral economics background or from any kind of psychology background, but you've got to appreciate that you want to tell a story that's grounded in data. And that's what our business will be about in the future. To be on top of your game, I would definitely say versatility. We need athletes, not specialists today. It's ethnography in the morning. It's data integration for lunch. It's survey research in the afternoon. In the evening, it's controlled experiments. So definitely being able to be able to be well-rounded researchers. So I'd like to thank Kiosk for being our partners and putting that together. I think that was a great uh, tee up for our, uh, for our questions that we're gonna ask. So here's how it's gonna work. There are gonna be four ARF leaders out in the audience and you're gonna have to bear with us a little bit because only one microphone can be on at a time. And I'm gonna turn it over to the esteemed David Marins and he's gonna kick us off and then we're gonna kinda go around the room and we're gonna go until we're ready to close the conference, and I'm going to get back up, and I have a few slides to uh, send us all off home with. So David. I wanted to echo something that I've heard, and especially just now from Stacy, that, um, that th there's been something different, and I was sharing this with Gail earlier, that something different about this um, AMS conference 8.0, and I, that I remembered 
um, about seven years ago, I guess, when, some, when I had just started at Time Inc. And, and I got a call about what the vision of this conference was, that it was going to cut across, it was going to be holistic, it was going to be the big issues that we all share no matter what um, platform or what medium we're in. And never quite made it. It always was siloed, and I used to joke that I was, you know, it was, it was TV, it was digital, and then, yeah, Betsy, could you go on this panel with the radio and the outdoor people and the print people? So, um, but I think this conference really did it. It really brought to the surface those, those big issues that really unite us and that we all have to address together. So, anyway, I would answer question three because right now I don't have a job or an office, so, um, <laughs> so but, but, um, but I think the question that I would love to see um, ARF um, really tackle um, is uh, the best opportunities for success in, um, in understanding multicultural consumers. And, um, you know, I think there's a lot of, certainly a lot of reasons why it makes sense, certainly the, the very, um, um, you know, real ones about the growing population, the fact that it's, these are consumers who um, spend differently, who purchase differently, who use media and technology and entertainment differently. We have some tensions developing on, between multicultural agencies, general market agencies, multicultural cultural research companies, general market research companies, and the fact is never has there been so much at, at, as much at stake in terms of getting the messaging right, the images right, and um, I would love to see the ARF take a bigger role in that. Terrific. The, the answers will be under 45 seconds from now on. Corrine, <laughs> not that that wasn't worth it. Corrine, you have someone? Please. Mic on, yes. Uh, next up, we have Jim Thompson, who kindly offered to say some thoughts about the conference as well. Thanks, Corrine. Um, two thoughts, and for those who don't know me, I was 25 years in marketing research, and now I'm on the academia side. Um, and I had two thoughts coming out of the conference. One is, I'm amazed at the progress that's been made on multiple screen research for networks. I, I really feel like we're running downhill now. We've passed the halfway point. Conversely, for brands, we're still halfway up the hill and have a lot of work to do. And so for me, as, as uh, I work at Temple and we design projects for students, it's definitely gonna be on how in the world do we help brands to figure out what to do in terms of, of multiple screens. Um, the second one is actually hitchhiking on something that was just in the kiosk video. Um, it's obvious that it's really important that we're for our students that we develop not just analytical skills, but strong communication skills as well. Okay. So I'm over here with a very popular person, Ms. Leslie from Nielsen. Um, so what question can the ARF help you answer? And I, I, I was really impressed with the um, questions that happened at the round tables at lunch yesterday and um, spent quite a bit of time looking at the questions on the backboard. And for me, the, the biggest takeaway is what, are, what questions are people asking? What is, what, is, what is this universe of um, researchers? What are the questions they're asking? Some of them um, I think we do have answers for. So it was interesting to read the ones where I think there are answers for some of these, and maybe that's about learning. But it was really interesting to get a perspective of where everybody is. So that was new and I thought really insightful, and I can't wait to be able to read those questions you know, in one space. Great. And I have actually Jenny over here who's one of our young pros who has a comment. Hi. Um, first of all, I want to thank the ARF and all the speakers for making this a very great learning experience for me. Um, I'm going to answer number two, um, but instead I'm going to just say taking back to my own learning what I've, um, uh, what I've learned. Um, I definitely think that one of the biggest takeaway to me is that stats um, only really, tell, only really tell a portion of the story and that we shouldn't look at numbers at the end goal by itself. Um, and that as some of the speakers yesterday and today have said that because of the abundance of data, it's also, um, and also with real-time data, it's also easier to make faster 
um, decisions more than ever, but also lends us to make more wrong decisions more than ever. And I think that this also um, makes me realize that as data itself only tells a portion, we really need to be aware of and be honest to ourselves what data can really answer and what questions does that data tell us. So um, uh, I think that's a, a really great um, takeaway that I've learned from here. Terrific. Mark? Hi. Uh, I'm going to answer the number two question as well uh, in terms of what I'm taking back to my office. Uh, I thought it'd be helpful to start by what I took back to the office after audience measurement uh, 6.0 and audience measurement 7.0. Uh, and that was basically, you know, when everyone asked me about cross-media measurement, I basically just said, well, look, it's, it's broken, it's a gigantic mess, and you don't have to worry about anything changing for a while. Uh, everything we're doing now is, is just fine. It's been the same way for the past five years. Um, but I'd say in terms of this year, you know, what's, what's really amazing to watch is that there is a tremendous amount of, of innovation that's happening uh, and that the industry itself overall is not standing still. Uh, the fact is, is that... This, it's a gigantic problem, it's a, a gigantic challenge, um, but everyone, based on the partnerships and the innovation that's happening here, is all collectively whittling away at this one chip at a time, and it is shaping up to be something. Uh, and I'd say probably the biggest takeaway is if you look at you know, this conference three years ago, when you look at the type of people who were here, there were TV people and print people and digital people, and everyone kind of huddled in their own different areas, um, and we're all trying to learn things from, from everybody else. But I think what's happening is that over time, these little silos are starting to erode, and we're all becoming more just media people that all need to figure this out to tell that one story that's going to get back to the advertiser to allow them to accomplish their goals. Thank you. A little love to this side of the room. I have Mike. Hi, Mike Block from Media Behavior Institute. Um, I too will go to the third question, but take it from a slightly different angle, not so much in terms of what questions can the ARL help me or, or any one particular company answer. I'd like to take it from an industry point of view. Um, we saw some really good stuff yesterday morning, um, addressing actually an area which can often be and often is incredibly fluffy, looking at um, future needs and the future of research, future researchers and so on, both in terms of Laura Desmond's presentation, some of the stuff we saw on the big data panel and so on. Um, and coming from uh, a position where I spent about eight, eight and a half years in an academic institution, um, not wildly different from um, a prison, in fact, um, I think there's a real need in the industry, and it was enunciated well here, for a different type of researcher going forward, different types of skill sets. We may not know exactly what the media industry and the marketing industry is, is going to be like going forward, but directionally, we know the kind of skill sets we need now and we're going to need more of going forward. I think the ARF has a, has a pivotal role to play in helping academia work out how to move in the direction which is going to serve the industry really well, and that means enable students to come out with the right skill sets, the right um, perspective, and therefore be attuned to finding the right kind of jobs, both within the research community, but also in the broader marketing community on the client side. I would love to see the ARF take a lead role in pulling together some kind of white paper, documentation, communication, which goes out to the broadest possible reach of academic institutions, not just the, the usual suspects, you know, the Ivy League and whatever, and the media-friendly universities, but push it out through the Journal of Higher Ed and everything to try and lay out a um, not a roadmap for academia. They have to define that for themselves but collaborate with academia to define the need uh, and help them work out how best to address that need because it's in the interest of students, which is the key thing for academia, but it's also in the interests of the universities themselves and of course the industry. And I'm sorry, David, that was more than 45 seconds. Okay, I'm here with Joy Joseph, principal at IRI. Thanks, Boone. Um, hi, I'm Joy Joseph, and I uh, run the marketing productivity practice at IRI. And one of the things in general across all of the sessions that struck me is just the diversity of research that has come in here. A lot of people a lot put a lot of thinking and effort into this. And what I took away from this is that there's different views and different models, and not maybe not one model fits all problems. And that's something that I should remember. We all know this, but we tend to forget this. Just as an example, earlier in the morning, we saw the AT&T folks that they swore by marketing mix model. And just a couple of hours later, I sat in a session where I was told that is completely wrong. So, so it's 
key point being that every model could be right or every model could be wrong, and don't fall in love with your own analysis. Your solution, the solution is, the solution mindset is a curse to so go into a problem with an open mindset and understand that the, uh, the consumer behavior is sufficiently complex that no single model could probably describe it accurately. So I'm going to go to my job differently with uh, promising not to have a, that solution mindset in there. So I have Athman here from Microsoft. And I will tackle the question maybe one and two together. I will say one of the interesting things for me is being a millennial and at the same time working for a technology company, I tend to approach these problems from a digital perspective. And so being surrounded by folks in the industry that have been doing this for a long time, that have been thinking about radio, TV, out of home, et cetera, it's really very, um, it's a great learning experience for me because I challenge a lot of the assumptions that I have given that I'm surrounded by other people who are thinking about some of these measurements in the same way. And so for me, I just really appreciate all the conversations that I've had with many folks here and just sharing their perspective and their experience and ultimately it really takes all of us together to be able to solve the problems for the industry. So thank you, everyone. From the young to the young at heart, Josh. <laughs> Thanks, David. What, what an unexpected and unscripted surprise. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm a little bit on the grumpy, jaded, curmudgeonly side at this point, but, but I found myself surprisingly energized by Bob Garfield's presentation at lunch today, and in particular his comment, you could sort of encapsulate it into his comment, everything you do is the new media department. So we, we always think about positioning as something we do as marketers and push out. But you, you know, I'm reminded of recent Trout who used to say it's the position you occupy in the mind of the prospect. You don't get to pick what position you occupy in the mind of your prospect. And if you don't listen to your customer, you, 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 you make that mistake at your own peril. And I, that really kind of sunk in for me. Uh, if you don't, this is, this is all I wrote down. If you don't start from the place your customer is at, then you're nowhere. Um, and that's probably going to, so that's my answer to questions one and two. You can decide which is best. Colleen? Oh. Hi. Um, I thought that it was, fan uh, one observation is that I thought there were more women on stage this year, and I really uh, thought that was fantastic. Um, I think that one of the most important things that ARF can do going forward is to uh, shepherd the conversation around big data. That was uh, the table that I was at at lunchtime yesterday, and I think that there's just a lot of different definitions of what we're talking about. No one has the slightest idea how to organize it, um, source it, in terms of who you should be recruiting. Um, should it be centralized or decentralized with uh, units supporting marketing, units supporting programming, units supporting uh, research, or should it be one group that somehow supports all of those functions? Uh, so I really think that the ARF could make a big difference in their members' um, work uh, throughout the membership, whether you're an advertiser or an agency or a media company, if you can help shepherd the conversation around big data. Uh, before I go into this side, is there anyone on this side of the room or that side of the room who wants to say something? Yeah? There you go. I can sit down. Everyone's sitting. Um, I've been struck in recent years at the pace of change, and it just seems to continue to accelerate. And my mood each year at the conference was one of overwhelm. And my sense now collectively, because we are operating collectively, is I think we are learning how to deal with an ever faster growing rate of change. Not that things are changing more slowly, but we're dealing better with it. And one other point, I want to thank the ARF. I teach at NYU. I had some students here. And it wasn't that their eyes were opened by the conference. It's how wide their eyes were opened by the conference. So what a really great event. Thanks. Should we keep going? One more? All right. One How about more. one more? And then I made we'll... a promise. <laughs> Stacy. Thank you, David. Um, I had a, also a big data comment uh, that builds on something that Colleen said. And I think the ARF in particular is very well positioned to help in this regard. Not that there are lots of questions we need to answer around big data or data science or whatever you want to call it, but I think one of the biggest questions we have is how do we play together? 
um, how market researchers as a discipline play together with data science and uh, how we navigate competing for the mind share of the CEOs and the executives in our organizations and, and what we do when we come to different conclusions as we try to steer them as they make their business decisions. I think these are issues that we're already starting to uh, experience in friction in our own organizations. And um, I think because the ARF is cultivating expertise with our, let's say, more seasoned professionals as well as our new young professionals, I think you are very well positioned to try and put all those disciplines together, the younger, the more experienced of us, and help us get at that, um, putting the best of what we do collectively uh, together to get to better business making decisions through whatever methods we come up with. So David, it's one more, one more. If you could uh, take the microphone to Jane because she had, had the one more, it was, that was another one and, more. And finally, <laughs> the last word. Jane Clark from Sim, it's a pleasure. <laughs> you said you wanted me to have something, so. Um, I was at the table yesterday about uh, you know, um, the researcher of the future and what the ARF can do. And, and I, what I'd like to, to talk about is what Dwayne said this morning about being systematic in our innovation. And so I think what the ARF can do is uh, to, to help the industry to be more systematic about our innovation, to take these questions that are unanswered, the unmeasured that we're trying to measure, and put it into the forums, get some innovation teams going. This is kind of what Sim's been doing with cross-platform measurement, but there's so many challenges in the industry that I think the ARF can really contribute to uh, push ahead these in a more systematic way. Thanks. Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for participating. And i uh, love to continue the dialogue. So um, please keep the questions and comments coming. And it's now my pleasure to close the conference. The big news of this conference is groundbreaking new studies, new research, never before seen. Um, it was standing room only in so many of those breakout session rooms. And, uh, and so many people commented that they learned something. Um, so that's really about measurement. But what's even more important is there was a lot of discussion about applying insights and going beyond measurement to meaning. And then about leadership, because we're all here to figure out, you know, what we're doing, but go beyond that and figure out how do we want to do it and get examples from each other. And so then finally, the opportunity to collaborate with each other in this room. And I really like this idea from peers to the peerless because I have met people in the last few days that are folk heroes in the industry that I never thought when I started my career 33 years ago that I would ever have a chance to meet in person. And many of you have likely had that experience as well. And that's really one of the great uh, gathering opportunities uh, at the ARF and for this conference. So here's some quotes, and I won't uh, read all of these to you, but uh, you know this idea of failing cheaply, uh, that's, a, that's an interesting uh, kind of invocation for us. It's, it's not a race of ideas, it's a race of collaboration, so what greater opportunity than to be all together and collaborate? Um, we need measurement to rapidly evolve. There was a lot of discussion about measurement, but there was just as much discussion about uh, roles, evangelizing, educating. And then finally, I love this uh, quote, remember there are people behind these numbers. And I think that's something that as we walk out you know, from measuring the unmeasured, that you know, we're representing the consumer. So uh, with that invitation, the, the partners and the possibilities through the ARF, for those of you that are member companies and those of you that are considering being member companies, we have 400 corporate members from across six continents, and we're going to go bigger, we're going to go global, and we're going to get out of Dodge. Um, this is our board of directors, and you've seen the slide, but I just have to say, you know, from Colleen Fahey Rush, who's our board chair, to uh, the likes of, you know, David Poltrak and Artie Bulgren and Jan Fulgoni and a lot of the people that you've heard speak, and there are so many board members that are represented here, uh, that Jane Clark, that, uh, that have not um, been maybe on the podium, but have been so important to me and so welcoming to me and so helpful, and they are also a really critical part of your ARF. Um, so I want you to know that it's important. So here's our promise to you. 
This isn't a vision, it's, not, it's in lowercase, but you know, I thought these were things we could all agree to that we could do for you as the ARF, which is we can anticipate and we're, really, we're gonna act because we said, tell us what your questions are and now we're gonna go off and we're gonna work on answering them. Uh, we create relevant research, it's original and it's curated, and, it, and we're gonna help make it more and more valuable for you, that's why, that's why we're here, that's what we want to accomplish for you. So here's our invitation. This is the close of the conference. We want you to tap into AM Plus. There's just a wealth of information there. It's a very efficient way for you to continue your learning journey with the ARF. It's a really clever uh, idea that the folks at the ARF came up with for a way for you to get more information uh, at your desks. Build your own personal board of directors. That's a different way of thinking about collaborating and connecting with the peers and peerless. Uh, please bring our original and curated research to your table and help us find things for you. If you want to come to our table at the ARF and bring your team and, and bring some questions, we will happily put some materials together. And we have an amazing team of people, as you've hope, hopefully experienced the last two days, to help you work through your biggest business challenges. And then stay tuned because we're planning to answer these tough questions. This is a journey. So we say ask the questions here and come back to rethink. We really look forward to seeing you there. Uh, in the spring and uh, save the date and the conference is officially closed. <laughs> <laughs>